All right, good evening. It's uh, great to be here. Is this thing on? Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks for sticking around for the second half. All right, so um, there we go. I can hear it. All right, so it's great to be here with a lot of friends tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about a topic that's very dear to my heart, the um, topic of uh, safety and bicycle networks. So um, I'm just going to jump right into it. So I have this guy named Ian who I work with, and he has this theory that we, when we use the word safety, we don't always mean the same thing. And here's the theory here is we have three different ways that we use the word safety. And I could talk a little bit about those. So the first thing some people mean, they say, is that thing safe? They mean, did we follow the rules? Did we use the right standard? Did we apply the right guideline? For highway engineers, road designers, this often means those uh, famous words, the MUTCD. Did I follow the manual on uniform traffic control devices? Or did I follow the Astro Green Book? For a long time, our guidelines have been out of date, and that's been a problem for safe design. Good, the good thing is that we're catching up. We have new guidelines, such as the Mass DOT's new separated bike lane planning and design guide. So I want to talk a little bit about those uh, types of bikeways from this perspective. So that's one type, the legal safety. The second perspective is the statistical safety. And this is about the numbers. Where are people being hurt? How many deaths on this street? What's the rate of injury for this type of user on this street? Now, this is critical data to make our streets safer, but it's not information that you and I walk around having in our head. We don't think, um, should I cross this street? No, what's the crash rate here? Oh, no, I'm going to go down the next crossing. You know, we don't, we don't think that way. We think about comfort. This is our perception of safety. This is how we feel when we travel. We think, do I, do I feel safe crossing the street here? Am I comfortable biking down this street? That's a really different perspective. So it's really important that we have all those three in mind when we think about what it means to be safe. So um, I just want to tell a little story about um, a project we did with the city of Cambridge. We recently produced their bicycle master plan, and these are two maps that get at this relationship between the statistical safety and the comfort or perceived safety. On the left, we see people, over 1,000 people, telling us where they don't feel comfortable on streets in Cambridge when they're riding their bike where they want to see improvements. That's that kind of comfort or perceived safety. On the right, you see the statistical safety. That's actual police data reported where crashes are occurring, where people were doored or hit at intersections. And not surprisingly, you see a lot of overlap. A lot of those streets pop up, Mass Ave, Hampshire, Cambridge Street. There are also some important differences. Um, on the left map, you'll see a really strong line north-south in the center of the city, very uncomfortable but doesn't show up on the crash map. Anyone who bikes in Cambridge have an idea what street that is? Prospect. All right, yes, exactly. It's Prospect Street. Now, there's not a lot of crashes there, maybe because people don't ride there, maybe because there's no parking. The sight lines are pretty good, but it is not a fun place to ride. So when we think about safety, we have to think both about that statistical perspective, the numbers, but also how do people feel? We're getting people feel comfortable, so getting at both sides is really important. Okay, so when I first started out in bicycle planning, you could not have a conversation about safety in bicycling without it going strictly toward helmets and helmet usage. Well, we've been focusing on the wrong thing. So this map looks at the relationship between um, helmet wearing rates and crash rates. So the blue line, the taller that is, the more helmets people wear in that country. And this is a sampling of countries, United States, Finland, Switzerland, on the left, down the Netherlands on the right. The orange line is the number of fatalities per billion kilometers cycled. So again, the taller that orange line, the worse the safety is. So what you see here on the left, the US, we've been really good at promoting helmet use. Best of all the countries survey. We have the most dangerous streets by cycling by far. Now go to the right side of the chart, what do you see? Netherlands, no helmets, must be unsafe, right? No, safest rates by far. And what they've done is they focus on design, the design of their streets, we focus on individual behavior. Clearly, they've learned something that we have to uh, take a lesson from. So the thing that we've learned, actually, is the, is the, the thing that makes the separated bike lane or the cycle track feel safe from a comfort perspective, it also what makes it statistically safe. So this is a picture of what happens at a standard intersection. The image on the left shows a bike lane approaching intersection, a car turning right. So this is kind of the vehicular approach, the bike lane next to the travel lane. You can see when that car turns right. On the right, you see the driver's view. What don't you see? The bicyclist, right. You can't physically see the bicyclist. We have designed a system that contributes to these safety problems. So now we see the same perspective with a separated bike lane. 
So by the simple fact of offsetting the bike lane from the travel lane, moving it back, protecting the cyclists, we've also created a safer sight line at the intersection. By that simple fact of offsetting, when that motorist turns now, what do they see right in their line of sight? Bicyclists. So design is fundamental to creating these safe interactions between different users. So now let's see this in real time. So on the right here, we see the, what we call in our field the classic right hook. You know, a right turning motorist crossing the path of bicycles in the bike lane. So anyone here ever been in this situation? Yeah, okay, okay. I should have asked who hasn't. Clearly we all have. So on the left, we see what the simple geometry changes do, that same interaction. Here we see a separated bike lane, a protected bike lane, a motorist turning right, that protected island slows the turn, creates good sight lines, and what do you have as a result? Happy people riding their bike in comfort, having conversations, you even see a young man carrying uh, his daughter without a helmet. Clearly he feels safe, that system is working for him and his family. So I just want to close um, with these images from the Netherlands. This actually is uh, Amsterdam, the world's bicycling capital. A, sh a shot in the left, 1970s, and a picture today. Um, the thing is, they didn't look that different from us in back in the 1970s. So I bring this up for two reasons. One is we've got to remind ourselves that this transformation is not going to happen overnight, but we need to have a vision. So in the Netherlands, it took a rash of traffic violence, young children being killed on the streets, to get that country to change course. Um, now, I don't want to wait this long to see these results, and I believe we can get there sooner, but I do know that change is hard, but working together, I believe we will succeed. Thank you.